for all those who remember these guys. Unfortunately, they're not around anymore, but they were such a big deal in the hardcore deathcore community, especially in California, and I'm super excited to share their story. So my friend, as usual, take a cup of coffee, a cigarette, burrito, whatever you feel like as we explore the suffocate MySpace era. So the band was actually founded in 2003 in Oakland, California, and Ricky Hoover wasn't in the band yet. It was Jared Armitage, very good vocalist, and during their very first year, they released a demo called Destined to Fail. Pretty awesome, right? But what's even more awesome is that the demo actually cut the eyes of Jamie Jasta from 8 Breed. So later in 2004, they went with him to record their very first album called Oakland. Wow, man, I mean, this was crazy. It has this pure, hardcore, deathcore, California type of energy. It's, it's awesome, for real. And again, if you've been watching my videos, you know how excited I am and how much I love raw sound. You know, kind of a not so good quality, but it's making up for it with the violence and energy, if that makes sense. Well, this album is exactly that. Sure, it was rough around the edges, but it was exactly what people wanted. And it feels like this album was built for live performances, you know, for the fans to go crazy and have fun. And uh, that's exactly what happened. I have to give credit to Jared, he was an awesome vocalist as well, I mean he sounds brutal, he has a great stage presence, so I think it's worth mentioning. Anyway, so they kept playing for like two years and in 2006, pretty interesting, they made an EP called Legacy of Pain with all the Suffocate members, but it wasn't labeled as Suffocate, check it out.
Unfortunately, it didn't work out with Jared. I'm not sure about the reason exactly, but after hearing a lot of interviews with Suffocate, they were explaining that they went through a lot of member changes through the years um, because of them not being involved or serious enough. And um, it, it happens very often with a lot of bands, you know. Um, you're about to get a label or you, it's about to get real and travel and then you're not sure anymore and, and stuff like that. So I don't want to spread any rumors. I have no clue if that was the case with Jared. I'm just saying it could be the reason. So as I was doing my research through MySpace blogs and stuff, I found one that they did exactly when, I think it was in February 2007, they were looking for a new vocalist. So I'm gonna read it to you, it's pretty interesting. We're currently seeking a new vocalist and we'll be auditioning over the next month. We have a few people we're looking at, but we're still looking for more additions for the spot. We're looking for a few things in you if you're planning on getting in lives locally or is willing to relocate to the Bay Area near Oakland, California, can support themselves, <laughs> get a job you fuck, able to be gone playing at least six shows a month, able to practice at least twice a week here in Oakland, your own transportation and license, somewhere between 18 and 25 years old, willing to lend help loading the band's gear and with making merchandise, willing to tour seven times a year for at least a week, good vocal range with lows and high, we don't want to take the band in some crazy direction, a recording of what you can do, some pre-existing experience would be nice, no rockstar attitudes. If you are lacking on a couple of things, fine, but really, the more of all the above, the better. Which brings us to Ricky Hoover joining Suffocate. It took them around a year uh, to, to find Ricky, but keep in mind, uh, finding a good vocalist that vibes with all the members and all that, it's not always easy. And uh, fortunately for the band, they found one of the best of all time, at least in my opinion. But don't get me started on this, we're, I think we're just gonna move on with the video instead. Uh, Ricky Hoover actually did an interview with the band uh, a couple of months after joining and he's explaining why he chose to join Suffocate. Always been in go nowhere bands pretty much and uh, I don't know, once I got the chance I just jumped on it. It's, it's an awesome band, awesome guys, a lot of fun doing it. So already in 2008 the band was blowing up on MySpace, it was crazy. And a couple of months later, September 2008, the band announced that they would soon release a new full length with their new lineup. So with that mindset, their new energy with Ricky and all that, they did their thing, they toured for a while, and they finally got attention from Media Scared Record. Very big label. They had bands like As Bloods Runs Black, Ghost Inside. And a lot of amazing bands. So yeah, the thing is, I'm not sure exactly when they got signed, but I know that in December 2008, Media Scare was like everywhere on their MySpace profile. So it has to be between September 2008 and December 2008. Anyway, they kept playing Oakland live, it was crazy.
holy shit, man. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, you're gonna understand if you didn't know Suffocate back then and uh, if you're discovering them as I'm making the video, you're gonna notice that Ricky Hoover's stage presence is just amazing. Not just him, I mean, to be fair, the whole band is amazing life, but Ricky just had this, like, scary, amazing presence, you know? He's a dull dude, like, you know? And I don't know how to explain it, it was just awesome. So yeah, they did their thing for two years. Remember when I said that in September 2008, they announced that they would be working on a brand new album? I'm not sure why it took two years and they were signed. It's a good question. Maybe they were on the momentum of like touring and making their name out there and Oakland was good enough to do that. Could be the reason. But yeah, after two years, in 2010, they finally released their brand new album called No Mercy, No Forgiveness. Dear God, man, this album, where, where to start? It's one of my favorite, most special album of all time. Um, it honestly helped me through so many things, so many difficult steps in my life. And uh, I'm very thankful that it ever existed. I mean, Ricky's vocals are perfect and I heard him in interviews now, um, we'll get to that later uh, with his new music, but he didn't like his vocals very much, but to me they were perfect. Amazing lows, great eyes, great mix of both, uh, well placed in the song as well, so to me it was outstanding and very good. There's no song I would skip on this album at all. I mean, the music was fun. It's it's very hard to explain, but and it, and this is just my opinion. There's so many bands focusing on being respected and accepted in the metal community, while a band like Suffocate, I feel like we're just doing their own thing and focusing on live performances and fun, making music that people would just bounce and enjoy. I think Suffocate was about that, and it shows on the album. I mean, the two steps were so good, like the hardcore influence. Constant Urge to Kill is a very good example of that. And then we also have the signature never ending breakdowns, like in Force Fed. I can't even tell you how many times I've listened to this song, it's crazy, like thousands of times, I'm sure, for real. But of course, their biggest song on the record was probably Not The Fallen, a song for which they did an amazing video, I'm sure you all remember. What a classic, man, so awesome. Of course, like, every single deathcore, metalcore, hardcore band at the time, they were getting mixed reviews with people trashing the album and all that, but to me, even today, it's still a masterpiece. Okay, let me tell you how excited I am to show you how amazing the live performances were at the time.
Can someone please take me back to those years? Holy shit! I wish I could be objective and, and tell you something negative about their performances or the band, but I just, I can't. To me, this band was perfect. The performances were just like... Oh my god, like, it's impossible for me to even watch those videos without having chills. It's, it's... It's crazy, man. They're still in my top five favorite bands ever. I think it's worth mentioning that even if people always considered them as a deathcore band, the band really didn't care that much about that. Currently, Suffocate is whatever the hell you want it to be. Yeah, uh, I mean, I bad ass. ass. How about that? That's no, awesome. That works. Um, we have. I, I, I always saw it as we were hardcore kids who make metal. Yeah. Cool, right? <laughs> Some people classify it as deathcore, death or, or <laughs> you can call it what you want. We just like to make music. You know? Yeah, I mean, different types of music, different heavy stuff. And while on the topic, it was always funny to me how important it is in the metal community to label those bands. And you know, as I'm making videos, uh, I'm getting a lot of comments of people saying it wasn't deathcore, it was brutal slam or something, or it wasn't deathcore, it was more on the metalcore side. But half of those bands, you know, I could even say the majority of the bands never really cared about that at all. They just wanted to do music. I remember Mitch Locker in an interview saying that he didn't care about deathcore and he considered Suicide Silence, <laughs> funny I'm wearing the, I didn't even realize I'm wearing the Suicide Silence shirt, um, yeah he was saying that he considered Suicide Silence as a heavy metal band, that's it. By the way, I can't wait to do the Suicide Silence video, it's gonna be amazing, but yeah, anyway. To go back to Suffocate, actually they were getting so much more traction, they were getting bigger and bigger, everybody was talking about it, at least that's how I remember it, and I think it's yes for the music and for the band itself, but I believe that it was mostly because of Ricky's look and personality. I think we all remember the Ink and Honor interview, right? Uh... Well, I've always been a fan. When I was real young, my uncle Randy was a musician and he had tattoos and I thought they were red, so I used to like try to draw them and stuff. So uh, ever since I was a little kid, I just been wanting to get them. I mean, I think everybody in the scene was captivated by, you know, his tattoos and his big stretches, which, by the way, I still think it was awesome. He looked like a freaking Maya warrior or something. I don't know how to explain it, but his look was perfect in my opinion. Anyway, during those years he did other amazing interviews, he was everywhere online. My sleeve, the middle of my throat and this side of my neck and my entire torso are all done by Justin Foss from Sacred Gypsy Tattoo in Bakersfield, California. He's like the best person I know, uh, tattoo wise anyway. And by the way, I know I'm fanboying like crazy and I'm getting excited and all that, but I'm like that, I'm a positive person and those years were so important to me and obviously you know look at what I'm doing right now and with the channel I mean obviously for me it's a big deal and I think there's never enough positivity those bands worked so hard to make their mark and they were doing it with you know passion and dedication so if we have something positive to say why not say it 
So yeah, during the summer of 2011, we took a break from touring and the, the videos, interviews and all that to go back in the studio for which they released amazing little studio updates. You know how much I like those. What's up guys, this is Ricky from Suffocate. We're here at Undercity Studios in North Hollywood, California, working on our next record. People were excited, man. And when I say people, of course, I'm including myself. When one of your favorite band is announcing a new record, you're kind of praying that, you know, they don't change their sound too much or like that they keep being awesome, if that makes sense. Which is fortunately for me and for the fans, exactly what Suffocate did with their brand new album called Return to Despair. So freaking good. I mean, I like this one as much as the first one, for real, but it's very different. The sound is way more polished, if you will, which makes it a little less brutal. But that being said, it was also more bouncy, so it, it was still amazing. I'd say my favorite songs on the record would probably be My Darken Eyes. The hole beneath. And everything is lost. But honestly, if you never listen to that album, just listen to everything. I'm just showing you my favorite parts, but the whole album is amazing. Which, once again, brings us to the live performances.
so freaking good, man. I wish I would have been there. Another band that I didn't see live that I wish I could see. But yeah, in 2012, a year later after releasing the album, they did a live performance with Jared, the old vocalist. I always love to see when the old vocalist does a performance. You remember in my Bring Me The Horizon video, um, when the former guitar player went on stage with Bring Me The Horizon, it's always, you know, heartwarming to see that, to see that they're in good terms. I think it's an amazing gift for the fans. So yeah, in 2012, Ricky did a couple great interviews. It's going great. Um, actually, it's a, it's a bit of a different CD, it's a bit of a different sound. It's a more meaningful CD for me. I, uh, I wrote from a different place. I wrote, uh, I wrote a lot more personal, like type of lyrics and stuff, and like stuff that kids always go through. I mean, depression, suicide, frustration with everybody around you, getting people, people who turn their backs on you. I wrote about the music industry and how shitty it is. The music industry is very cutthroat, very shitty. I wrote about that. I wrote about pretty much everything one goes through being alive, you know what yeah, I mean? For sure. So I'm getting a lot of good response on that. Uh, kids are feeling like singing along the show. Kids are, a lot more kids are knowing the lyrics and singing along, which I, I love when kids sing along. I also really like his opinion on haters. Most of the comments, if not a majority of them, are all talking shit, either about my plugs or about my tattoos or about, like, they don't really talk shit about the music too much. It's all about just you. how stupid they think I look or how... I must be some kind of asshole because, you know, Rockstar Dickhead, when I'm not, but it's, it's just funny because it's getting it more plays and more like this, so, so I definitely want to tell the haters out there to keep hating. Thank you for making my days more interesting and making me enjoy it, you know, like, I enjoy the hate as much as I enjoy the praise, I guess. I don't know if you remember, but during those years, Ricky had an awesome company with his dad. Uh, they were making wooden plugs and uh, it was awesome. It's ran by my father and I. Uh, I ship them everywhere in the world, global, you know, everywhere. We make different types of plugs, different types of woods, different types of styles. Um, it's all custom, or you know, you can get the normal stuff. It's all, it's all customer. You know, we're one on one with the customers. We don't like going through shops too many. I've only, I'm only in really one shop, and that's the shop I get tattooed out of a lot, it's called Sacred Gypsy in Bakersfield. Which sadly brings us to May 2012 when Ricky on his Tumblr announced that he was leaving Suffocate. Now, I won't read the full statement because it's quite long, but if you want to press pause, I'm going to leave it on the screen. Ouch, man. I mean, it might sound a little weird, but for me it was devastating. Not only because I was a big fan of Suffocate, but also because I was a big fan of Ricky himself. It was a big inspiration to me, as I mentioned before in my video. And um, as a fan, knowing that you won't be able to see him performing live and you're not sure if he's going to do music again, it's, it was a big deal. But then he became a barber, super talented barber, which, fun fact, inspired me to become a barber as well, which I was for seven years. I also really have to mention that Ricky during those years was more and more getting into fitness and he literally became a monster. And I mean that in the most friendly and kind way, I just mean it was very impressive. He basically looked like he killed the old Ricky. Until a few years ago, he came back with a brand new band called Of Sulfur and honestly, they're killing it. Guys, I'm telling you, I saw them live a year ago in Montreal 
And let me tell you, they were the opening band and they should have been the headliners because their performance is just crazy. That's pretty much it guys. I mean, I know the band tried to do a few comebacks over the years, but in my opinion it wasn't the same and uh, I think they had a little drama too, which I really don't want to get into. So we're just gonna end it up here, okay? Anyway. It was a very important and special video for me to do. It wasn't an easy one because Suffocate isn't one of those bands where you have a huge Wikipedia page and full of information. I really had to dig deep to find like MySpace blogs and stuff like that, but I had a lot of fun doing it and I really hope my video is gonna do justice to the band's story. As I'm making the video, it's, it's gonna be out only in a few weeks and I just, I can't wait. I'm so excited for real. As usual, if you want to support the channel, just leave a like and subscribe. Uh, you can also comment your opinion or whatever story you have. It's always a pleasure for me to read that. Thank you so much for all your support. It's an amazing journey and there's a lot more content coming. So yeah, I'm gonna stop talking now. I'll see you in the next one.